Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Roundup. A controversial topic that's been making headlines recently, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's allocation of $1 billion in federal contracts to arrive can firms. This has sparked accusations of money wastage and even allegations of a scam. $1 billion of taxpayer money handed out to companies for a border app during the pandemic. Sounds reasonable, right? But here's the kicker some of these firms apparently didn't even do any work. It's like paying someone to mow your lawn, but instead they just lounge around sipping lemonade while your grass grows out of control. So how did we get here? What exactly happened with these ArriveCan contracts? Before we delve into the topic, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The controversy surrounding Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's allocation of $1 billion in federal contracts to ArriveCan firms has raised serious questions about government accountability and the potential misuse of public funds. Opposition parties and the Canadian public are demanding answers about these contracts and the allegations of wastage and scams associated with them. Hey folks, big news broke in the Globe and Mail this morning. A billion dollars was paid to three of Justin Trudeau's favorite firms. Now those same three firms have also been suspended, though the government won't say why they're suspended. They will say that, of course, no one did anything wrong with any of the contracting in Justin Trudeau's Ottawa. Justin Trudeau's increased the use of outside consultants by 60% since reports indicate that Trudeau's government awarded substantial contracts to companies involved in the development and operation of the ArriveCan app, which was used to track and monitor travelers during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there are accusations that these contracts were given out without proper oversight and that significant amounts of money were wasted or misappropriated. The implications of such actions on government accountability and public trust cannot be overstated. When elected officials allocate taxpayer money to private firms, there is an expectation of transparency, due diligence, and ensuring that the funds are used efficiently and effectively. Any deviation from these principles erodes the public's faith in their government and raises doubts about the integrity of the decision-making process. To illustrate the gravity of the situation, let's look at some specific examples of the contracts in question. One company received a multi-million dollar contract to develop and maintain the ArriveCon app, despite having limited experience in the field and questionable track records. Another firm was paid exorbitant fees for consulting services that yielded little tangible results or benefits to the public. Subcontractors were hired without proper vetting, leading to further wastage and potential fraud. Three government contractors involved in developing the ArriveCan app have received over $1 billion in federal contracts over the past 13 years. Coretix Technology Consulting, Dalian Enterprises, and G3 Strategies have been under scrutiny for their involvement in federal outsourcing and their contracts related to the ArriveCan app. These companies have faced allegations of contracting misconduct, including inflated resumes, and are the subject of ongoing investigations, including by the RCMP. We heard from one of his favorite contractors, one of these three contractors, who was part of the billion dollars in payments, that their commission is 30%. So we have uh, a couple of companies with only a couple of employees each making 30%, but not doing any of the actual work that they're being contracted for. Dalian, an Aboriginal owned company, often partners with Coretics for contracts under the Federal Procurement Strategy for Indigenous Business. However, there are concerns about whether these companies have complied with program rules, such as ensuring Indigenous participation in the work. The federal public accounts show that Dalian and Coretics have collectively been paid $635 million through federal contracts since 2003, while GSU Strategies, established in 2015, has received $59 million since, since 2017. GC Strategies Managing Partner Christian Firth has stated that his company typically charges commissions ranging from 15% to 30% of contract value, with an average of about 21%. However, the companies involved have to comment further. The scale of contract work awarded to these companies has raised concerns among MPs about the oversight of federal spending on outsourcing. Conservative MP Stephanie Cousy emphasized the need for a review of the system, while NDP MP Blake Desjarlais raised concerns about the lack of Indigenous participation and the potential for excessive subcontracting. Auditor General Karen Hogan's report on ArriveCan highlighted mismanagement, including narrow contract terms set by GC Strategies. Additionally, it was revealed that David Yeo, founder of Dalian, worked for the Department of National Defense while his company was contracting with the government, 
raising conflict of interest concerns. The government disclosed that 162 conflict of interest declarations related to government contracts were made by employees in the 202324 fiscal year with some resulting in resignations or abandoned contracts. As citizens, we have the right to demand transparency and responsible stewardship of our tax dollars. We must hold our elected officials accountable for their actions and ensure that they act in the best interest of the nation, not just a select few. What are your thoughts on this controversy? Do you believe the government should face consequences for any proven wrongdoing? Leave your comments below and let's continue this important conversation. Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. In a significant move, opposition parties in the Canadian House of Commons have joined forces to pass a motion demanding accountability for the controversial ArriveCan app funding. The non-binding motion, spearheaded by official opposition leader Pierre Polyver, calls on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to collect and recoup all funds paid to ArriveCan contractors and subcontractors who did not perform any work within a 100-day time frame. The vote saw a clear divide, with 170 members in favor and 149 against with only the Liberal Party opposing the motion. This rare display of unity among opposition parties highlights the growing concerns surrounding the government's handling of the ArriveCan app and the associated funds. Recouping the funds from ArriveCan contractors and subcontractors may not be a straightforward process. There are potential challenges that the government may face, including legal disputes and resistance from the contractors and subcontractors, difficulty in proving the lack of work performed or the extent of non-performance, navigating the complexities of government procurement processes and contracts. These challenges underscore the need for robust oversight and transparency mechanisms in government contracts to prevent such issues from arising in the first place. As the government works towards retrieving the funds, it must also focus on implementing measures to ensure accountability and prevent similar occurrences in the future. The passage of this motion marks a significant step towards holding the government accountable for its handling of the ArriveCan app funding. As the 100-day timeline unfolds, it will be crucial to monitor the progress made in recouping the funds and ensuring transparency in the process. The outcome of this endeavor will have far-reaching implications for government integrity and public trust in Canada. The ArriveCan funding scandal has far-reaching implications for the integrity and transparency of the Canadian government. When leaders like Prime Minister Justin Trudeau are accused of misusing public funds and engaging in questionable contracting practices, it erodes the trust that citizens place in their elected officials. Scandals like this one chip away at the foundation of confidence in our political institutions. Canadians expect their government to be responsible stewards of taxpayer money, allocating resources fairly and efficiently to serve the public good. When billions of dollars are funneled to firms with alleged ties to those in power, it raises serious questions about the motivations behind these decisions. Media scrutiny plays a vital role in holding leaders accountable for their financial choices. Investigative reporting can uncover improprieties and shine a light on unethical practices. Public discourse, fueled by these revelations, puts pressure on officials to explain their actions and face consequences for any wrongdoing. That's all for today. See you next time. For more updates, you can visit scoopcanada.com. But before we depart, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.